Hello everyone. All right, we're going to do another weekend video lesson going through the overall market and taking a look also at some sectors. But overall, the melt up continues. Listen, August and September, going back to 1950, two worst months for the S&P 500. However, over the last 20 years, that has not really been the case. Actually, on a rolling 4, 6 and 14 year basis, one of the worst months has been October. So in the more shorter term, October is more of a rough month included with September than August, September. August has a history of being choppy until the end of August in the short term where we should continue to rally. And then September and October, doesn't matter what years we look at there on the look back period. These are some pretty weak months. October, more recently, September since the dawn of time for the S&P 500. But I want to give everybody right now, just let you know, yeah, we came out of a loose squeeze. The trend, the momentum was higher, and we fired out of it, and we're going to continue higher. Until we get up to the 3 ATR, there's no reason to fight this whatsoever. And if you're looking for signs of where it might exhaust itself, take a swing high to a swing low in the reverse, reverse order for Fibonacci retracement. And then I also like to use the Fibonacci symmetry lines. If I can figure out where the heck they are. There we go. We take this swing low to this swing high. Connect it to this swing low. And we can kind of see here, we've already hit this 127 Fibonacci retracement extension. But we still have room to go to the next level which is right around, this is off a little bit. I can already tell, let me move that down right there. Okay, swing low, there we go. To that swing, how did that swing low? Okay, so in between, we can expect this market to continue, I think, to at least 445, up to about 448. That's where the Fibonacci symmetry says that we should go. And the Fibonacci reverse retracement also suggests in this zone, which if you notice, happens to line up with the 3 ATR. So we have room to go higher for the SPY. I don't see any reason why we're not going to keep going higher. Just remember, our concentration right now of what's working in this market is to big cap growth stocks and big cap stocks overall. I, a lot of people are kind of concerned about that. And yes, more breadth is good. But remember all those breadth indicators that we're looking at? And we'll run through them again. How I've been, I, I don't, like I said, I think I said it last weekend, and but I think don't think I said it on the weekend video the lesson before. What if the market is correcting internally and the big caps are holding up because the market is overall so strong and eventually the money starts flowing back into this market, taking the small caps higher and the big caps just continue to lead. Big cap stocks technically have been leading versus small cap stocks since 2013. So why should we consider, you know, to change? But bottom line is, SPY looks like it has more room to go. The QQQ, same situation. You could do or do the same Fibonacci work since we're at all-time highs to see where we could go. But we're still technically in a loose squeeze with positive trend momentum. So we haven't even fired out of that yet. It could definitely turn into something. The DIA, positive trend momentum in the middle of that squeeze. We could definitely trend higher to the 3 ATR. And then I know that everybody's, including myself, is worried about the IWM. It's been lagging. It's been bad since February. This high right here came with negative divergences everywhere in the Russell 2000. And now we're not going anywhere, no surprise. But my end-of-day methodology is more geared towards small caps and mid caps. Obviously going to have to change this as this continues, because there's a lot of amazing moves in the options market with these big caps with liquid options. But for now, on an end of day basis, it's always been about the small caps and mid caps for me. Make a lot of money when they're in favor, but when they're not in favor, I don't just take trades to take trades. I don't force trades. The trades come to me, they set up properly, or we don't trade. And right now with the small caps and mid caps out of favor, we don't have a lot going on on the end of day swing side. But what I want to make mention is we keep failing around this 50 day moving average, these tails, right? This does look bearish, but we've just completed a slingshot move 
into a medium is what I call this squeeze. If we continue to drift higher and we can fire out of this squeeze, I would expect the market to go higher. Now, I know with the small caps lagging, also that everybody's also, you know, have you seen the utilities? People are asking me, and I'm like, yes, I see the utilities, I see the REITs, I see the XLP. But what's important to me is to take a look at how they look via ratio chart to the S&P 500. And the best way to look at all these charts is on stockcharts.com. Look at the utilities versus the S&P 500. You can see and it's been in a clear downtrend since November of 2020. Until I see this start trend up like this, above all of these key moving average lines and this key resistance level, and we can break this downtrend line, which we have broken that downtrend line. That's step one. I, I, I'm just not going to get you know, too concerned. In September, yeah, maybe. And am I concerned because of seasonality? Sure, absolutely. But there's no reason to think that a big nasty bear is coming whenever the utilities versus the S&P 500 looks like this. And when consumer staples to the S&P 500 looks like this, or how about the REITs to the S&P 500? They're looking a little bit more strong, but overall, compare those charts that we've just looked at to stuff like the QQQ to the S&P 500 off the May lows. That looks stronger, doesn't it? And how about the XLC to the S&P 500? It doesn't, it's not in a death spiral, but these are all holding up. We're not seeing any real deterioration. Are there warning signs out there? Yeah, there's warning signs everywhere. I mean, I'm concerned about the breath right now and everything. And if the market rolls over, it becomes a problem. But until the market actually rolls over, we could be having an internal correction rather than needing a real market correction. And I'm, you know, I, I'm, you got to let these bad summer months go. But once we get through September and recently October, we get into November, December, January, I'm bullish. I'm as bullish as can be. The only thing that's going to change my mind is that the Fed starts hiking rates in successive manner. And until that happens, I, I want to be a buyer of every dip. So those are the ratio charts. Let's look at some of the breadth charts just to see if we can see anything warning us that the recent strength is not real and that we should be even more concerned than what I've brought up in these video lessons recently. We'll order, and we're just going to just run through them um, randomly. This is the advanced decline line of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Anything concerning here? Absolutely not. But once again, it's only 30 stocks. S&P 500 mid-cap advanced decline line. Look like we might want to break down here, but we've reclaimed these moving average lines. We're holding steady. There's no real deterioration there. We're holding up. It's good. This is the NASDAQ advanced decline line. This is a little bit more concerning, but we're not just breaking down. We're still holding these recent lows. And we've got these curls in the PPO and MACD off the lows. And the RSI has already gotten oversold. So nothing too terrible there. The NASDAQ 100 advanced decline line obviously looks fantastic. New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line is looking like it was rolling over, right? But now we're back above those moving average lines. We've got the curls in the MACD, RSI, and PPO. You know, it seems like over the past week, we've, we've basically have found our footing. Instead of making th things getting worse, they appear to be getting better. This is the common only NYSE advanced decline line. Looks a lot better than it did whenever it looked just like this. We had a rollover concern here that didn't spill over to the broader market, and now we're stabilizing. S&P 100 advanced decline line. Looks fantastic. Once again, it's narrow, but it looks like it's getting better, guys. The S&P um, small cap advanced decline line pretty good. We look like we were rolling over here. We've seemed to have found some footing. Still got to get through September. I mean, we could still be bullish in September, but guys, it's going to be hard. But nothing here tells me we are about to just die. Uh, this all looks good to me. This is the S&P 500 advanced decline line. Looks good. Now we're looking at the advanced decline volume lines. Okay, not as good on the Dow as the regular advanced decline line, but still nothing of concern there. Mid-cap advanced decline volume line, nothing of concern there. We're just biding time. 
Look at the NASDAQ advanced decline volume line. Remember how the actual NASDAQ advanced decline line looked weak or weaker than the NASDAQ 100 advanced decline line? Look at this volume line. It's fantastic. It looks great. NDX advanced decline volume line confirming the NASDAQ 100 advanced decline line. It's, it, it looks good. New York Stock Exchange advanced decline volume line, eh, more middle of the road chop, but nothing terrible. And that's the whole point. Nothing terrible. Common stock only advanced decline line, nothing great, but nothing terrible. And that's just it. As we look through the rest of these advanced decline volume line charts, here's another one. This is the small cap advanced decline volume line, SPX advanced decline volume line. And then this is just the NASDAQ up volume to down volume. Figured it out on my own, cumulative total. Everything looks fine. And that's my point. We've got to take the weight of the evidence. We take all the good looking charts versus the bad looking charts. And it's quite obvious nothing looks terrible. There are a lot of charts that look range bound, but there are a lot of charts that look good. We don't have any charts that look bad. Weight of the evidence suggests, even with some weak seasonality to be expected through August, Things aren't bad yet. Now, in September, we could easily roll over. The market can roll over. All of these lines that we're looking at can roll over and things get ugly. But as of right now, I see nothing to be concerned about in the market. And while we're having a tough time finding new long positions on my end-of-day swing side because mid-caps and small-caps are not in favor, if the, if the IWM ratio to the SPY ratio, looking at these ratio charts, oh, got to get off that cumulative total line. IWM to SPY, you know, you can see, trended up here. We did very well during that period of time. But I just want to show you guys this. Let's just do 10 years and see what this chart looks like. IWM versus the SPY. You can see that since 2013, it's had an overall downtrending bias. It only recently had a strong uptrend from March of 2020 till March of 2021. So overall, big caps have continuously led small caps. But that's what my end-of-day methodology is focused on. Now, that being said, it's not like mid caps and large caps don't show up. Mixed bag recently with our new long signals. We've had more losers than winners. All of them have been for small losses. The problem is, Usually a handful of winners take care of all those losses because we're looking for three to four to one reward risk ratio. We haven't quite gotten that yet. And also, there are certain signals that whenever I get them, I know that I can push and increase size. Um, you're looking at one of them, EVC. This is what it looked like this day. Still didn't get huge size because the market wasn't lined up properly. But as you can see, it, see it's still up 64% since the signal date. So things are working, but there's just more hit and miss out there. HRC was a recent long position. If Telechart ever wants to work during this video lesson. Here we go. Okay, thank you. You can see that this one still up 17%. HCI, we've been long this one for, for a minute now. After Friday, it's a 60% gain. Um, see the white triangle, by the way, guys, just to let you know, if I'm not long the stock, like Apple, do you see a white triangle here? Amazon, do you see a white triangle here? No. So that means I don't have a position. So I would put it in the system and tell a chart. TACT is a new long position here, 23%. Just want to show you guys, there's been some winners out there. They're just fewer than the ones that either go up a little or don't go up. IDT, here's a big cap one. There's 128%. At least I think it is big cap. I don't know. I'd have to look it up at MarketSmith. But the whole point here is that you're seeing that there are stocks that are working out there that we have issued as long signals. Look at PRFT. You know, <laughs> look at how long we've been long this one in a steady uptrend the entire way. Uh, boy, CCRN, you can see where's the, look at when we enter this one. 125%. INTU. LH, don't even need to do that. Just look at where the white triangle is. Pool, MDP, INVE, can't even see that white triangle. Look at how far back that is. Still trending up. So, you know, we still got um, good positions working out there. The problem is 
We don't have a lot of size left in any of them because we've been chopped out, shaken out, whatever, taking profits on the way up. I'm a little bit more tight right now than I usually am. But I'm telling you guys, that these signals are going to come back. And when they do, we're going to get these same kind of returns. It's just right now in the short term, we don't have a whole lot. But that being said, the market looks great. It's just all about those big cap names. So I would love to give you guys um, um, new trade idea for Monday session. But once again this weekend, I do not have any new long ideas on an end-of-day basis of quality or in the mid-cap to big-cap realm. And even if I did, um, it's very risky here. But that's why we have stops. We always have stops on everything. All right, everybody, I'm going to wrap the video lesson up there. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I will see you if you are a family member of BigWaveTrading.com in the chat room Monday morning in the pre-market. Aloha.